Here is my security news roundup for the week ending October 20th, 2023. FCC has a new plan to stop robocalls. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission signed an agreement with Singapore regulators to work together to crack down on robocalls conducted internationally. This partnership will allow the FCC and IMDA to share strategic insight on scams to better combat the growing and evasive threat of such scams and mitigate the risk facing citizens and businesses stemming from fraudulent activities. FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel and Chief Executive of IMDA Lu Chiang Hong signed the document at a ceremony in Washington, D.C. on October 11th. Read more at cordcutternews.com. Update. 23andMe user data stolen, now offered for sale. On Friday, October 6, 2023, 23andMe confirmed via a somewhat opaque blog post that threat actors had obtained information from certain accounts, as many as 7 million, including information about users' DNA relatives' profiles. It seems the attackers didn't simply steal the data belonging to the accounts they broke into. They used those accounts to access a much larger trove of data via DNA relatives. According to Bleeping Computer, the number of accounts sold by the cybercriminals does not reflect the number of 23andMe accounts breached. Read more at malwarebytes.com. Rooting paves way for teens to sue companies for social media addiction. Los Angeles County Judge Carolyn Cool dismissed most claims brought by minors or parents of minors against social media platforms, according to Bloomberg. However, the judge ruled that Meta, Snapchat, TikTok, and Google couldn't use the Communications Decency Act's Section 230 or the First Amendment to block claims that they created their platforms to be addictive to youth, causing depression and other issues. The judge also paved the way for plaintiffs to proceed with claims that Meta knew about its platform's defects, yet didn't share that information with users. Read more at androidauthority.com. Google Play Protect introduces real-time code-level scanning for Android malware. Google Play Protect will now recommend a real-time app scan when installing apps that have never been scanned before to help detect emerging threats, the tech giant said. Google Play Protect is a built-in free threat detection service that scans Android devices for any potentially harmful apps downloaded from the Play Store, as well as other external sources. In extreme cases, an app may be blocked from being installed. This enhancement will help better protect users against malicious polymorphic apps that leverage various methods, such as AI, to be altered to avoid detection. Google said, adding that the feature is being rolled out in select countries, starting with India. Read more at thehackernews.com. Lazarus Group targeting defense experts with fake interviews via trojanized VNC apps. The North Korean-linked Lazarus Group, also known as Hidden Cobra or Temp Hermit, has been observed using trojanized versions of virtual network computing, VNC, apps as lures to target the defense industry and nuclear engineers as part of a long-running campaign known as Operation Dream Job. The threat actor tricks job seekers on social media into opening malicious apps for fake job interviews, Kaspersky said in its APT Trends report for quarter 3, 2023. Lazarus Group is just one of the many offensive programs originating from North Korea that have been linked to cyber espionage and financially motivated thefts. Read more at thehackernews.com. 
U.S. DOJ cracks down on North Korean IT scammers defrauding global businesses. The U.S. government has announced the seizure of 17 website domains used by North Korean information technology workers as part of an illicit scheme to defraud businesses across the world, evade sanctions, and fund the country's ballistic missile program. The Department of Justice said the U.S. confiscated approximately 1.5 million of the revenue that these IT workers collected from unwitting victims using the deceptive scheme in October 2022 and January 2023. It also called out North Korea for flooding the global marketplace with ill-intentioned information technology workers. Read more at thehackernews.com. California IT company leaks private mobile phone data. The Cyber News research team found that DNA Micro, a California-based IT company, exposed the sensitive data of more than 820,000 customers due to a misconfiguration in its systems. Cyber News advises affected users to take the following actions to mitigate the risks. Make sure all available software updates are installed. If the device doesn't support the latest software versions, consider replacing it with a new device. In most cases, IMEI numbers can't be changed. So if the device stops working, or if you are concerned that someone will try to track you through the device, the device should be replaced with a different one. Change your phone number. This is often a simple and free process. Be cautious of new incoming email communications and be wary about opening attachments and links. Changing email addresses would be the most effective way of mitigating the risk. Read more at cybernews.com. This week's Must See on my YouTube channel. Humans are still king when it comes to writing convincing phishing emails, but Generative AI tools could be making it easier for attackers to automate customized phishing campaigns at scale. Please watch my video on that topic by following the link listed. Did you know there actually aren't 57 varieties of Heinz ketchup? It never were. Company founder H.J. Heinz thought his product should have a number and he liked 57. The Japanese word kuchi samichi is the act of eating when you're not hungry because your mouth is lonely. Always do the very best, even when no one else is looking. You always are. Don't disappoint yourself, thanks to Colin Powell. Just thought you might want to know. And that's a wrap for this week's Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye, and thanks for watching and listening.